Welcome to part six of the advanced Revit course. In this lesson, we're going to be going over some of the graphic stylization settings that are available to you inside of Revit. This will include the line weights, line styles, and line patterns. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Next up, we're gonna look at something that's more stylization than anything else, but what we're gonna do is have a look at the Manage tab and look at some of these additional settings which help you stylize your Revit drawings. So the first thing you'll see is line styles. This is something that I didn't realize for a long time that you could do, but this is where you adjust the line styles that are available to you. So this is what you'll see under your detail lines. If I press DL, these are all the different line styles available to you. So you can draw, let's say a thin line, or you can draw a medium line, just draw that in, or you can draw a, this is why you need to change it because it can get quite annoying. Let's say a 1.0 pen that's gonna be even thicker. This is where you can adjust all these different line styles. You've got a dash with a one point line. If we go to the additional settings and line styles, you can see all of those are the here. You can see that the 1.0 pen has a line weight of seven. That will make sense in a second. You can see that the line color is black, which it is. That's this line here, remember? And then the line pattern is solid, which it is. If we look at, say, this dash, this was the dash 0.1 pen, and you can see that the line weight is one, the line is a color in black, and then the dash has a dash tight pattern, which it does. So what if we wanted to create a, say, stormwater run line? What we can do is click on the modify subcategories and click new, and we can call this stormwater run and this will be under the subcategory of line. We'll click OK. Now, the line weight, the higher this number, the heavier the line weight, and this is actually referring back to some of those AutoCAD principles of um, having a, say, a yellow line which is 0.7 millimeters thick. This is where those things are referenced, but the line weight we'll look at in a second. The color, let's say we wanted this to be a blue, um, maybe a lighter blue like that, and then the line pattern, what if we wanted this to be a dash dot? We can have a look and see that there is a dash dot line pattern. And this is something that we can edit as well in a second. This is the overall place where you'll create new line styles. So let's have a look at what our stormwater run looks like. If we apply that, then hit DL to create a dimension line. You're now gonna see that we've got a stormwater run line, which should be a one millimeter thick or a, one, a weight of one, which doesn't necessarily mean a one millimeter thick line, but it's got a weight of one. It's in that cyan, cyan color. And then it's also a dash dot dash dot pattern. So if we go to additional settings, you're then gonna see line weights and line pattern. Line weights is where you'll change, this is what I was talking about earlier, the model line weight values. So at a scale of 1 to 10 to 1 to 50, the line with a weight of 1 is going to be 0.18 or 0.18 millimeters thick. So you print it out on a page that's A1, it's going to be 18 millimeters thick. But at a scale of 1 to 100, it's only 10 millimeters. And you can actually change this here. If you wanted this to be 18 millimeters as well, you can actually change that here, apply it, and then there you go. So if you ever want to change any of these, you can do so from the line weights. You can also see you've got perspective line weights. So in a perspective view, this is how they will look and so forth. That'll make sense, I'm sure. So that's why when you're in line styles and you've got a line weight of one, this is actually printing out at a 0.18 millimeter thick line. So what about the line pattern? If we go to line patterns, you can see that this is a list of all the different patterns that we've got. We can go ahead and create a new one or edit one that we've got. For example, the dash that we use. If we edit this, you're gonna see that you can specify what the dash distance and the space between each dash is. So if we make each dash three millimeters, it's gonna be three millimeters thick. And then the space between it is only gonna be two millimeters. But what if we wanted a tighter dash? You can see that we've actually got a dash tight here, but it's still only three millimeters thick and then the distance between the space is a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna actually create a new line pattern and we're gonna call this dash tighter. And under the type, we're gonna make a dash. We're gonna make the value one millimeter. 
and then we're going to have a space with a value of one millimeter. We'll click OK, click OK. If we go ahead and create a new line style with this dash, we can go to new line style. We're going to call this dash uh, tighter and we'll click OK. We're going to give this the line pattern that we just created, which is going to be dash tighter. And we're just going to apply that, click OK, create a new detail line. And we'll make this dash tighter wherever we've put that. And you're going to see that that dash is now one millimeter in distance in length with a space of one millimeter between it. So this all becomes very important once you start graphically representing your model, because at the moment this is all very kind of just standard. It's using the standard stuff from Revit. The hierarchy isn't there. It's not looking great with all these different hatches, but this is what we'll be touching on and getting into in a moment. There are a few other settings under additional settings that are worth looking into. For one, you've got fill patterns. This is where you'll have and you'll be able to adjust all of your different fill patterns or hatches. And you've got two different fill pattern types. You've got drafting patterns and model patterns. Drafting patterns are only going to show on your drafting views, for example, your floor plans and your elevations. Whereas the model patterns are going to show throughout your entire model and throughout your entire project. So that's going to show on your 3D views as well, perspectives, things like that. Whereas a drafting pattern won't show on those views. And there are ways to create custom patterns and to load in different types of patterns. Um, there's a, only a couple of different ones you get with the Revit installation that you have, but there's definitely a lot of these to get. And I have a whole bonus material library of patterns as well, which you can dig into. So moving on in additional settings, you've then got probably one more thing that's useful in here that we need to touch on. And that's going to be arrow heads. If we click on that, you're going to see that we can edit the different types of arrowheads. So at the moment, you can see there's a whole list of different arrowheads that you'll be able to use for your text annotations, for different spot elevations or anything that needs a leader on it. If you've got different tags that are tagging walls or anything, which we'll also get into soon, um, then you'll be able to change these leader heads here. So if you ever want to change the type of your leader head, you're going to do it with this system family. But that is something that we will also touch on soon. But that's just a basic overview of the different types of additional settings that are going to be looking at and changing the stylization of your Revit model and your project, which I think you'll find very helpful once we get into it. In the next lesson, you're going to be introduced to using door and window tags. And we're just going to be creating some basic ones for now. And then later we're going to create some really cool, good looking custom door and window tags. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.